Hello and welcome to Fast and Factual. I'm Utsav Parekh and I'll take you through the top 50 stories of the day. Let's begin. The US is reportedly planning to give Ukraine cluster munitions. This is according to White House officials. If this is approved, Ukraine will get a powerful tool for its ongoing counteroffensive. However, several human rights groups have already voiced their concerns. This is because cluster munitions leave behind unexploded bombs which can kill people years or even decades after they were fired. More than 120 nations have banned the use of cluster munitions. Russia and Ukraine exchanged prisoners of war on Thursday. Both sides returned 45 soldiers each to their respective militaries. Ukraine said over 2,500 of its troops had been released by Russia since the war began in February last year. However, Moscow did not give an official count of its troops released by Kyiv. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko said peace talks between Russia and Ukraine could start this autumn. Lukashenko said, and I quote, the situation will change by autumn, we will talk at the negotiating table. He further added that Belarus was ready to mediate talks between Moscow and Kyiv. Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky arrived in the Czech Republic's capital Prague. Zelensky met Czech government officials to drum up support for his country's NATO membership. NATO members remain divided over Ukraine's accession to the alliance. They'll meet in Lithuania on the 11th of July and discuss Kyiv's NATO membership. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg met Swedish and Turkish officials in Belgium's capital Brussels. This was on Thursday. After the meeting, Stoltenberg said Sweden's NATO membership was within reach. He also said that delegates from Sweden and Turkey will meet on the sidelines of the upcoming NATO summit to iron out their differences. Chinese President Xi Jinping inspected the People's Liberation Army's Eastern Command on Thursday. He addressed senior military officers and stressed the need for Chinese troops to be combat ready. He told military commanders to step up training exercises. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen met Chinese Premier Li Chiang in Beijing today. She's on a four-day visit to China amid frosty ties between the two nations. Yellen called for ke keeping lines of communication open between the U.S. and China for healthy diplomatic and economic ties. She also urged the Chinese government to adopt market reforms. Yellen is next stated, slated to meet Chinese President Xi Jinping. U.S. President Joe Biden's new asylum policy has delayed the entry of hundreds of migrants. The asylum seekers are now stranded in Mexico near the U.S. border. Biden's new asylum policy was implemented on the 11th of May. Under this, migrants who don't use America's Customs and Border Protections app have a lower chance of claiming asylum. One person was killed after clashes erupted between locals and migrants in the North African country of Tunisia. The killing came after nights of violent clashes in Tunisia's eastern coastal region. Police officials say disturbances between locals and migrants have been ongoing for almost eight days. This is because of a surge in migrants reaching Tunisia in hopes of crossing the Mediterranean Sea to seek asylum in Europe. After the violence, Tunisia deported hundreds of migrants to its eastern neighbour, Libya. Violence has erupted in the occupied West Bank again. Israeli soldiers killed two Palestinians in the city of Nablus on Friday. Israel claimed they targeted militants suspected of carrying out an attack against police officials. This comes just days after Israel conducted a two-day military raid in Jenin City in the occupied West Bank. At least 12 Palestinians were killed in the Jenin raid. A, a retirement home caught fire in Italy's Milan City on Friday. At least six people were killed in the incident. Over 68 people sustained burn injuries. Italian authorities say three people were in critical condition. Fire marshals are investigating the cause of the fire. 
at least six people sustained injuries at the San Fermin Bull Run Festival in Spain. Officials say no one was critically wounded. Every year, Pam Pamplona City in northern Spain holds the Bull Run Festival. The festival is almost 700 years old. However, there is a growing pushback against the tradition from several animal rights groups. Titanic tour company OceanGate has suspended its operations following the implosion of the Titan submersible. This comes after repeated calls from scientists and experts to halt deep sea missions on private submarines. Remember, late last month, OceanGate's Titan submersible imploded during its trip and all five on board were killed. In climate news, heavy rainfall caused flash floods in Spain's Zaragoza city on Thursday. Several vehicles and streets were submerged due to the heavy rain. No injuries were reported. Spanish authorities halted train operations in the city due to the flooding. Police urged residents to avoid unnecessary travel. Peru's Ubinas volcano registered a new explosion on Friday. The Ubinas volcano first erupted on Wednesday this week. Ash clouds from the eruption rose almost four kilometers in the sky. At least 2,000 people living near the volcano were impacted by the volcanic ash. Peru's government has declared a 60-day emergency in regions near the volcano. A heat wave has been ongoing for over 10 days in China's capital, Beijing. Temperatures peaked at 40 degrees Celsius. City officials issued a red alert and urged residents to stay indoors. Companies were ordered by the government to halt all outdoor work in Beijing. A heat wave is also scorching Egypt's capital, Cairo. Temperatures reached 38 degrees Celsius on Thursday. Some locals in Cairo took a dip in the Nile River to cool off. Egypt's weather service said temperatures are expected to remain high till Sunday. Deforestation in Brazil's Amazon has fallen by 30% in the first half of this year. This is according to satellite imagery data produced by the Brazilian government. The country's environment ministry said the downward trend in deforestation was in line with the government's objectives. In January, Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva took office and he had promised to end deforestation in the Amazon by 2030. In the UK, two climate activists interrupted Labour leader Keir Starmer's speech on Thursday. This was as Starmer spoke to voters about his party's mission and objectives. The protesters accused Starmer of making a U-turn on a green energy plan. The two demonstrators held signs that read, no more U-turns. A new study says it would take almost $200 trillion to stop global warming. The research suggested that investment worth trillions of dollars would be needed to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. According to the report, without the gigantic investment, countries that have promised to become net zero emitters will not be able to fulfill their pledge. On to business news. American audit officials have started a fresh round of inspections on US-listed Chinese companies. A team of U.S. officials has been sent to Hong Kong to review the 2022 audit reports of some high-profile U.S.-listed Chinese firms. This includes companies like Tencent and DD Global. The inspections are part of an agreement signed between Washington and Beijing last year. Plane maker Airbus's June orders have been boosted by record demand from India. Last month, it booked more than 700 orders from Indian Airlines during the Paris Air Show. 500 of these were from budget carrier Indigo and another 250 from Air India. Aerospace deliveries have been plagued by supply chain problems and labor shortages since the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the industry is now seeing signs of stability. India's central bank is working on rules to better regulate fintech companies. This is according to one of the deputy governors of the Reserve Bank of India, T. Ravi Shankar. 
Shankar said that the RBI is talking to fintech companies. He added that any regulation will be enacted after close consultation with industry stakeholders. Reports say electric car maker Tesla is laying off some battery production workers at its Shanghai plant. This was, it was not clear how many workers will be let go. The reason for the layoffs is also not clear yet. Tesla's Shanghai factory is its largest and most productive plant. It employs around 20,000 workers. Binance's chief strategy officer, Patrick Hillman, has quit the cryptocurrency exchange. He said this in a tweet yesterday. Hillman joined the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange in 2021. He had taken over as the strategy chief in October last year. Binance has been mired in controversies and faces multiple business roadblocks in various regions. Last month, US regulators sued the company for allegedly operating a deceptive business. Uber and Facebook are two new companies that have found themselves entangled in the PricewaterhouseCoopers Australia scandal. The two companies said they had received advice from PwC Australia about the country's tax laws. However, the companies added they were surprised to find that these consultations were based on leaked government plans. PwC has been facing scrutiny for its role in leaking confidential information about Australia's tax laws to its corporate clients. App-based food delivery companies like Uber and DoorDash have filed a lawsuit against New York City. This is over the city's new minimum wage law. The companies say that the minimum wage law misunderstands how the food delivery industry works. The law will require companies to pay delivery workers nearly $18 an hour. It comes into effect from the 12th of July. Reports say that the Bank of Canada will raise interest rates by 25 basis points in July. This is according to analysts. If it happens, the central bank's interest rates will stand at 5%. Analysts then expect policymakers to hold rates well into 2024. Twitter has threatened to sue Meta over its new text-based app, Threads. Reports say Twitter has accused the Facebook parent company of hiring its former employees to work on threads. These employees allegedly had access to Twitter's trade secrets and other confidential information. However, a Meta spokesperson has denied the allegations. In a post on their new platform, he said that none of the engineers in the threads team are former Twitter employees. India will launch its latest moon lander mission, the Chandrayaan-3. This was announced by the country's space agency. The Indian Space Research Organization will launch on the uh, mission on the 14th of July. This comes after almost four years uh, since ISRO's previous launch attempt in 2019, which was unsuccessful. Moving to sports, in cricket, the Netherlands have confirmed their berth in the upcoming Cricket World Cup 2023. The Dutch team defeated Scotland by four wickets in a do-or-die qualifier. The Netherlands side chased down a target of 278 runs in 42.5 overs. They were guided by the heroics of Bas de Lide with both the bat and the ball. The all-rounder slammed 123 runs off 92 balls and took five wickets to seal the win for the Netherlands. Bangladesh opener Tamim Iqbal has announced his retirement from international cricket. Iqbal made his ODI debut in February 2007. He has scored the most ODI runs and hundreds for Bangladesh in the 50-over format. The 34-year-old has registered 8,313 runs and 14 centuries for his team. He's also the third highest run scorer in ODIs among active players, only behind Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma. Moving to football, La Liga team Atletico Madrid have signed Spanish defender Cesar Azpilicueta. He has been signed as a free agent on a one-year deal. The 33-year-old will make a move from Chelsea after having played 11 seasons for them. He'll be returning to Spain after 13 years. The Spaniard made 508 appearances for Chelsea during his tenure. Bayer Leverkusen 
have signed Switzerland midfielder Granit Xhaka. He's now back to the Bundesliga after leaving the English Premier League side Arsenal. The contract will be valid till June 2028. Although the financial details of the deal have not been divulged, reports say a fee of over $27 million was paid. 30-year-old Jaka played 268 games for Arsenal since joining in 2016. France, French club Paris Saint-Germain have signed Milan, Milan uh, Chacrinier on a five-year deal. The 28-year-old will make the move from Inter Milan. The Slovak defender's contract will run until the 30th of June 2028. PSG signed Shakrinia on a free transfer, meaning no transfer fee was involved. Moving to tennis, world number three Elena Rybakina has defeated Alize Cornet in the ongoing Wimbledon. With this win, she has reached the third round of the tournament. Rybakina beat Cornet 6-2-7-6 on Thursday. She'll next face British player Katie Bolter in the third round. Andrei Rublev has defeated fellow Russian player Aslan Karatsev to move to the third round of Wimbledon 2023. Rublev beat Karatsev 6-7, 6-3, 6-4, on Thursday. This is Rublev's 50th Grand Slam match victory. He'll next face wildcard David Goffin or Thomas Barrios Vera in the third round. Germany's Alexander Zverev has moved to the Wimbledon second round. Zverev beat his Dutch opponent 6-4-7-6-7-6 on Thursday to cruise ahead in the tournament. The world number 19 will next play Japan's Yosuke Watanuki in the second round. Zverev missed last year's Wimbledon due to an ankle injury. In badminton, Indian player P.V. Sindhu reached the quarterfinals at the Canada Open. She secured her spot in the last eight after her Japanese opponent withdrew from the match. Sindhu will now face Indonesian Masters champion Gao Fangji in the next round. Meanwhile, India's Lakshya Sen has also made his way forward in the Canada Open. Sen defeated Brazil's Igor Coelho 21-15-21-11 in straight sets. He wrapped up the match in just 31 minutes. Sen will now play Belgium. Uh, Julian Karaji in the next round. Moving on to the world of entertainment, Hollywood star Tom Cruise may have just celebrated his 61st birthday, but it seems he has no plans to slow down his career anytime soon. The Hollywood icon has revealed that he won't be retiring in the next few years. He's currently promoting his upcoming film, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Cruz said he hopes to continue acting in the popular franchise for another 20 years. Apple Studios has revealed a first-look image from Brad Pitt's hotly anticipated Formula One feature. The untitled film is set in the world of elite motor racing. Pitt stars as a formula, former F1 driver who returns to race for the fictional APX GP team. It, it also features Snowfall star Damson Idris in a lead role. Warner Brothers' The Flash has become the worst box office flop in superhero movie history. The film has barely managed to spend three weeks at the theatres. Ezra Miller's DC Solo earned a meager $5.23 million in its third weekend. This brings its domestic total sales collection to a lean $99 million. The film was reportedly made for over $220 million. The movie studio behind the distribution of the hit movie Sound of Freedom says its success repudiates the model of Hollywood gatekeeping. The film is a low-budget thriller about the global child trafficking trade. The film, which was once passed on by Disney, stars Jim Caviezel in the lead role. Singer Billie Eilish is working towards working on the official soundtrack to the upcoming Barbie movie. The Grammy-winning artist posted news of the song, set to be released on July 13th on her Instagram on Thursday. Eilish wrote, We made this song for Barbie, and it means the absolute, absolute world to me.
Apple TV's adult animated series, Strange Planet, is set for a global premiere for August 9th. It's based on Nathan W. Pyle's New York Times number one best-selling graphic novel and social media phenomenon of the same name. The series is co-created by Emmy Award-winning executive producer Dan Harmon and New York Times best-selling author Pyle. The new film Challenger, starring Zendaya, is set to make its debut at this year's Venice Film Festival. The film also stars The Crown's Josh O'Connor and West Side Story's Mike Fe Faced. Other films set to screen at the 80th Annual Film Festival include Yorgos Lanthimos's sci-fi movie Poor Things. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has publicly appealed to Taylor Swift to include Canadian dates on her ERA's tour. The news comes after Swift recently announced the expanded European leg of her tour. The last time Swift graced Canadian stages was during her 2018 stadium tour from, for the acclaimed album Reputation. The rapper Nelly has become the latest hip-hop act to sell assets of his hit-making catalogue. The St. Louis artist has secured $50 million from selling half of his catalogue to investment firm Harborview Equity Partners. The deal includes the sale of eight of Nelly's albums. The deal also includes his singles Dilemma, Hot In Here, Ride With Me and more. 32-year-old Iranian rapper Tumaj Salehi is on trial, reportedly for challenging the Iranian government and supported, supporting women's rights in his songs. According to media reports, the rapper could very well be sentenced to death for his songs. That's it for this episode of Fast and Factual. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to First Post.